So this is one of a series of videos that accompany the book Introduction to Engineering Heat Transfer published by Cambridge University Press. Uh, in this video we're going to discuss the relationship between heat transfer and thermodynamics. So you've probably had a thermodynamics class already and uh, if so you've already been introduced to the concept of heat. Right? In thermodynamics we said that heat is defined as the energy that's transferred across the boundary of a system uh, due to a temperature gradient. So heat uh, is energy that travels from hot to cold. In your thermodynamics class you define systems and you use these systems to carry out energy balances and heat then was one of a few possible ways that energy could enter or leave your system. However in your thermodynamics problems the amount of heat transfer was likely something that was given to you in the problem statement or maybe it was the one quantity you could solve for using an energy balance but the point is is you had no way of estimating heat transfer based on the physical situation so after you complete a heat transfer class you ought to be able to estimate the rate of heat transfer given the actual physical situation right the geometry of the device the materials that are used to make it the operating conditions and so on Energy balances are absolutely fundamental to the study of heat transfer, just like they were in thermodynamics. Uh, the difference is that in our heat transfer class, we're going to couple these energy balances with rate equations. And the rate equations are going to let us predict and understand the rate of heat transfer given things like material properties and characteristics of the temperatures that are involved. It's definitely worth reviewing energy balances before we launch into heat transfer because you won't be successful in heat transfer unless you have a really firm understanding of these energy balances. Thermodynamics teaches us that energy is a conserved quantity. That is, it's neither generated nor destroyed. And therefore, an energy balance on a system just enforces this idea that whatever energy enters the system must be equal to the sum of the energy that leaves the system and the energy that's stored within the system. And that's given by this equation right here. In equals out plus stored. For energy balances that are written for some finite time period, the in and the out here are going to represent the amount of energy that flows into and flows out of the system, respectively. And the stored is going to represent the amount of uh, energy that's stored in the system during the time, which is just the change in the energy between the end and the beginning of the time period of interest. In a heat transfer problem, all these terms are going to typically represent rates of energy transfer, and then stored will be a rate of energy storage. Energy can cross a system boundary in the form of heat, uh, work, or uh, if you have an open system, then there's energy associated with the mass that enters or leaves that system. So let's go through the process of writing an energy balance for an open system. So first we have to define the system boundary. And then we need to think about all of the inflows of energy, and those might include a heat transfer, so that's Q dot in, a work transfer, which is W dot in. These are rates of energy transfer, which is indicated by the dot. These quantities would have units of joules per second, or watts in the SI system. If there's a mass flow rate entering the system, M dot in, then we have to multiply that mass flow rate by the enthalpy that the fluid has when it crosses the boundary. And we're going to call that I sub N. Uh, and we're going to use I for enthalpy because um, we have this other quantity H, which is heat transfer coefficient, and we use that so often in heat transfer that we don't want to get confused. And here we're neglecting kinetic or potential energy of the fluid. Uh, we might have the same quantities leaving the system, so Q dot out, W dot out, heat and work transfer, and then m dot out multiplied by i out, so the uh, energy flow associated with the mass flow. Finally, the quantity big U is the total amount of internal energy contained in the control volume, so du dt is its time derivative, and that's the rate of energy storage. Again, we're neglecting kinetic and potential energy. So our energy balance just enforces that all the inflows must equal all the outflows plus the storage, as shown here. And again, thermodynamics by itself didn't give us any way to compute the rates of heat transfer based on the physical situation. And that is the goal of heat transfer. So the heat transfer class uh, should provide you with engineering tools that will allow you to, to compute QDOT based on different physical situations. Thermodynamics problems almost always apply to energy balances to finite size systems like the one shown here. 
uh, and heat transfer, the energy balances are often going to be applied to a differentially small control volume, and that's going to lead to differential equations in space. So whereas most thermal problems didn't require us to solve differential equations, many of the heat transfer problems are going to involve differential equations. So depending on how you feel about your differential equations background, uh, you might need to brush up on that as well. So this video has described how heat transfer is related to concepts that you learned in your thermodynamics class. You know, please watch our other videos that discuss the tools you need to solve heat transfer problems. Uh, this material is excerpted from the book Introduction to Engineering Heat Transfer, uh, which is published by Cambridge University Press.